Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and welcome to my tutorial for exercise one uh, of the exercises that we're doing for chapter 11 of the Zell third edition of Python book. Uh, it's now the spring uh, semester 2019, and I'm re-recording this because uh, we've changed around this exercise to take advantage of custom uh, uh, classes. We wanted to make sure that you got an idea to you, um, sorry, an opportunity to use custom classes created by other people in this class, me. Before we, uh, we introduced the idea that you were going to uh, create them, yourself a little bit later uh, in the course. So we do it here now. And uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at what we might use the custom class for now. And I'm going to copy over from my pre big version. Um, I'm going to copy over uh, a class called a, a module called my states uh, uh, dot pi, and this is a uh, this is a class that I created that holds information about a subset of the well, you know, I guess it could hold information about any state in the U.S. Okay, and. Uh, the land area in square miles and the water area in s square miles. Okay. And so let's just take a tour of the class. Okay. So uh, here's, here's the file. Okay. And the class itself starts with the uh, declaration uh, class. And it comes down here. And it goes all the way down through here. It doesn't include uh, the function main because what uh, we're doing in our class is we're using the main in these kind of modules that hold our own custom uh, classes. We're going to be using the practice to put our unit test code uh, in the main uh, function. Now, do people do this um, in the real world in their day jobs? No, they probably don't. They use similar kinds of tasks, and they use one of the uh, one of the formal unit testing frameworks, like uh, the ones for uh, Python that are the most uh, popular. One is called Unit Test, and the other one is called Pi Test unit test is the one that I use. And if you take a more uh, sort of an in, in intermediate Python class, um, that's a place where you should learn how to use a unit testing framework. So for now we're just going to simulate that kind of framework in uh, the function called mean. Okay, so here we've got unit test uh, case one through, I think we got seven of them, let's see, uh, unit case number seven, unit test case uh, number seven. And then in the very bottom, because we have hidden our unit test uh, cases in the mean, when we import this uh, module to just use the class, we don't want the unit test to run. Okay. Uh, yeah, we want them to run when we're working on the module itself. So we put the invocation to main in this uh, test. And uh, I think you'll see this in the Zell textbook and a couple of uh, places. It typically, I only use this uh, construct if I, I've got some code in the main that I don't want to run uh, when I import the module. Okay, before we do all of this uh, stuff, let's look at the class itself. 
the main part that you want to look at of the class is you want to look at the constructor. All the classes that we're going to create are going to have a constructor, and it's called uh, init with the double underscores or uh, dunders. Okay, and it uh, will take a a list of uh, parameters that include initial values for all of the um, all of the attributes, all of the field that that uh, that the class is going to hold. Okay, so we always, uh, when we're inside of a class and we're uh, we're inside of a method because uh, the uh, constructor is just a special method, okay, um, called dunder init, okay. Every time we have a method, the first parameter that we get passed is called self and it's a reference to the instance of the class that we're on right now. Okay, so that's uh, it's actually automatically generated by uh, PyCharm. So what are the fields, what are the instance variables of the class? State name, land area and square miles, water area and square miles. Okay, so three instance variables. Okay, um, we create those three instance variables in the constructor by assigning initial values. So within the class, we refer to the instance variable state name as state underscore uh, name uh, prepended by self dot. That's how we know it's just not a, not a regular variable. It's the instance of uh, variable of that name. And we do the same for land area and square, square miles. We do the same for water area and square miles as, as well. Although not everybody does this, quite a few people um, at this point, what they're doing is they're taking these parameter values that they're getting and they're assigning them to the instance uh, variables. What quite a few people do is they surround them with functions that will convert them to the type that we're expecting if we didn't get past that type. So here's a good way to document the state name we're expecting to be a string. If they pass us a string and we convert it to string, uh, no harm. It just doesn't really do any work. Likewise, the land area in square miles, we're expecting a float, so we're going to force it to float. And the water area in square miles, we're going to force that one to float as well. Okay? Um, so those are the fields. Okay, um, we're going to learn before we're done in this course how to create uh, special property based getters and setters. Okay, and they're a little too complicated for us right now. We're not really going to be using their uh, full uh, value and capability. So we're kind of we're going to kind of ignore all this code uh, right here, okay? It's, uh, it's a little bit fancy code and it's nothing we have to worry about just yet, okay? Oh, and I would go all the way up and include this up here when I say we're not going to look at that. So what does this leave? Well, it leaves three methods that we are going to use and we are going to talk about. The first one is called string. Okay. And it's actually called dunder str. And the second one is called repr. At least that's what I call it. It stands for representation. Um, uh, and it's a uh, dundered as uh, well. And these are standard 
uh, kind of service methods that you're expected to implement in your class. Uh, the string gives us a string representation of uh, the value that's being held by the instance. And the wrapper really does the same thing, okay? It's got a little bit stricter rules. But the thing is that some, some of the things that we're going to want to use call the string, and some call the wrapper. So all we do in our uh, wrapper is we call the string. Okay, so we use these kind of interchangeably. And we'll see in a minute what these, uh, what these, uh, these do. Okay. Uh, the last thing we're going to talk about here is the method. Okay. Um, uh, we've added a method here on purpose. Methods that are not part of the kind of infrastructure of the class. Um, they're not part of uh, getters and setters, which we're not going to talk about for, oh, another couple of chapters. Uh, they're not uh, the string or the wrapper, okay? Um, a lot of people call these worker methods. Why do they call them that? Well, because if you're doing the work of the class. Uh, classes are, uh, uh, these are custom methods that you create as the class author. Uh, I create it because I'm the class author here. And what this one does is it's called calculate total area in square miles. And it's a convenience worker uh, method that adds the land area in square miles to the water area in square miles and presents it as as though the class were keeping it as a piece of data, okay? Except that the way that you get it is that you call the method, okay? So let's go experiment with that a bit. I'm going to create a uh, just a practice class. So I want a new Python file, and I'm going to call this uh, uh, Frankie for uh, son of my Frankenstein uh, classes. So this was called Frankie. Okay, so here's uh, Frankie.py. Uh, doesn't have anything in it. And let's put the typical uh, comments at the top. Uh, Frankie.py will be the name of the file and uh, a program to uh, practice using the state class. Okay, call something like that. Highlight those two and turn them into comments. Let's make the text a little bit bigger here so we can see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to do the import. And the way we typically do this is we say uh, uh, from my states. Now, I call these modules that I uh, create for the class my this, my that. Uh, I, is that a good practice? Well, probably during your day job, uh, no. Probably during your day job, there'll be some uh, uh, some standard of the way that you name these things. I mean, they're properly named, but um, um, uh, this is just a quirk of our class. Okay, and then we're going to say from that module import uh, state. And that works just fine. Okay, now this is just going to be a program in which we put all of our code in the main. Okay, we're going to put a pass here just to hold our place. 
and then some down here we're going to have an invocation to uh, uh, to me okay uh, alrighty so uh, what are we going to have to do well let's just uh, create a uh, a state okay and remind uh, ourselves what uh, what's the constructor look like for the state class let's make that a little bigger too well it looks right here okay so we're going to we're going to say that we want a state and then we're going to pass the name the land area in square miles, the water area in square miles uh, to that. Okay, that looks good. Let's do that. Uh, go back to Frankie. And let's do this. So uh, let's put the reference into a variable we'll call S1 for state1 equals state. And let's just say uh, Wisconsin. Okay. And then a comma. The next thing we need to know is the land area in square miles. And uh, uh, let's just say 150,000. I don't know if that's right. No, we don't want commas in there. 150,000. Okay. And um, it takes, uh, uh, we're looking if for it to take uh, two decimal places. So let's say uh, 0.25. Okay. And then let's say uh, water uh, square miles is going to be 10,000. 500.25 okay so we have that so we have uh, a constructed a state object an instance of a state uh, class what happens if we just go to print it just the way it is what if we had, um, let's say we want a string uh, value of it so print stir okay when you call string in your client code you don't include the dunders the double underscores of s1 okay and let's see we need to get an extra line above main there we need to get rid of a couple of these extra lines we have here Put one more extra now it's not complaining so let's give it a run. So we ran Frankie. And let's make that a little bigger. Let's see what we have. And so um, I have finally uh, started to put the the string uh, uh, values for my uh, custom uh, created uh, Python uh, classes. A convention that a lot of people use that I've decided to follow now, and I think I really like, is um, you write it out as though you were constructing a new object of that value. So uh, we know it's it's a state uh, class that we are creating with the string Wisconsin, and then two numbers 150,000.25 and then 10,500.25 okay all right that looks good so then how would we use the parts of that I think that's a nice way to uh, uh, to get a uh, um, It's a nice way to represent the string of a class instance. That's what I was uh, trying to think of. Okay, so what what happens if we say print 
uh, and then we just say S1, not string of S1. Does it give us a similar friendly um, representation? Well, let's just go see. We'll save that and we'll run it. Yeah, it did. It said the same thing. Okay. Uh, good. Now, why does it do that so well? Well, uh, because we have the repr as well as the string. If we didn't have the repr implemented and the string implemented, it wouldn't look quite so pretty. All right. Now, how do we get the values from the fields? Well, in some object-oriented languages, you use uh, getters. You call methods. You know, we often say that uh, classes have both uh, uh, data and uh, behavior. Okay, they have two responsibilities. Uh, they have to know um, their data, and they have to be able to do their uh, behaviors. And in a lot of object-oriented languages, uh, we protect the data by turning it into behaviors. So we have a getter method and a setter method and all that. Well, that it turns out that's not the Pythonic way, as we'll see when we get to creating these custom uh, classes ourselves. So what are we going to do uh, here? Well, um, let's, the next thing we want to do is we want to print, and let's just say we want to print the state uh, name, okay? Uh, you don't have to call a method. You can just use the name of the field. So first you have to refer to the object, s1 dot uh, state name. And I'm just going to use the autocomplete here. Okay, and then let's print the next one. Let's print, uh, let's print uh, s1 dot uh, land area in square miles. Okay, and then let's print the next one. Uh, let's print uh, S1 dot water area in square miles. Okay, so let's see that. So we just see here that if we want to print a classic just string representation of the object instance. Because we implemented string and wrapper, we can get the first uh, two versions that we've already seen. But more typically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling the values out of the instance by using uh, the notation that we see right here. So let's give that a test. Let's give that a run. And that looks good. That looks like uh, we got what we wanted. So we got Wisconsin, 150,000.25, and then 10,500.25. That looks perfect. That's just what we were expecting. Well, what about the other piece of data that we talked about that we implemented with a, a method? Okay, let's go back and peek at that method in mystates.py, okay? The method is called calculate total area in square miles, okay? And typically we name the method starting with a verb so you know it's a method. So how can you tell it's a method that you're calling? One is instead of a noun, it's going to have a verb name if it was well named. And then the other things, it's going to have a set of parens after it. Okay, so let's go look at this. Let's go back to Frankie, and then let's just say print. Uh-oh. Okay, get down on the next line. Print s1 dot calculate. Okay, and if we just auto-complete that, Calculate total area in square miles, and look, it's a method, and we can tell for two reasons. One, 
The name is method like. It's it's a verb uh, phrase, not a noun uh, phrase. Okay, so the the instance uh, variables which we already use have noun phrases, and then the method uh, uses a verb phrase and it ends in paren, paren, so that's how we invoke a call to the method. Okay, so let's get that answer back and see what that looks like. Okay, so let's give this another run. And it came back small, so let me make it bigger. Uh, so what happens? Well, we added the 10,500 uh, to the 150,000, so we get... 160,500.5 and that's the combination of the 0.25 and the 0.25 okay now what if we wanted to force it to be uh, two digits uh, to print as a 50 well we'd have to do some formatting okay but right now it's just uh, coming back as a uh, float and we're printing them out so we're getting the print uh, values Okay, pretty nice. Okay, so uh, classes have responsibilities. Okay, and they are uh, uh, to know and to do, uh, data and behavior. Okay, so uh, those are the valuable things that they can do for us. So the class state has got three instance variables, state name, land area in square miles, water area in square miles. And they are part of its to know uh, responsibilities. Okay, they are instance variables. Okay, and we just have to refer to them by name. Okay, and then the last thing that has is uh, behavior and it's a uh, it's kind of just into the behavior range because it's implemented with a method but the action it does is it brings us back some data okay uh so you might say that it's part of the to know responsibilities but it's uh technically uh technically it's part of its a uh, uh to do responsibility it's bringing us back the total area in square miles Okay, all right, so that looks good. Now, what would we do if we wanted to use these? Um, what if we had a list of them? Now, why would we want to create a list? Well, in the, the example that we're working up to, we want to create a list of them because we want to sort it. Okay, okay, so let's create a list. We have an S1. Let's uh, create an S2 and an S3. So this is one of my tricks. I just kind of clone things. So we're going to call this one S2. And I'm going to call the next one S3. OK. And instead of Wisconsin, the next one would be Illinois. And Illinois is a little smaller, so we'll just say that's a hundred thousand square miles. Uh, hundred thousand square miles, and um, it will test say it has the same amount of water. No, no, not ten thousand five hundred. We'll say it's five hundred square miles of water. It, it probably doesn't, but and then the next one would be let's say. Um, uh, Florida and we'll say that Florida has uh, 125,000 square miles which I, I don't know we'll say it has a lot of water that it encloses within the territory let's say it has 20,500 miles okay so we've uh, constructed these three um, now, let's uh, create a list that we're going to call states. So if I have a list of 
state objects. So I always give it a name like states. Okay. And then I'm going to say uh, it's a list, square brackets, of S1, comma, S2, comma, S3. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is because we implemented the uh, the string and wrapper methods in our class, those two dunder, uh, dundered uh, methods, we can simply print states and we'll see a representation of the uh, of the list with three items in it and each of them will be properly formatted as a state. So let's do that. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So it's a list. So you see it's got square brackets and then the, the three items inside are separated by commas. Okay. And then the first one, uh, we're creating a, an instance of a state with Wisconsin and then Illinois and then Florida. Okay. Now, are those in alphabetical order? No, they're not in alphabetical order. And we're going to learn how to sort these things uh, when we get a little further into the code in the example that I'm going to move on in just a, uh, a minute. Okay, so I wanted you to get the idea of, uh, first of all, seeing a custom a class. Um, this is pretty much state-of-the-art uh, custom uh, class. Uh, the classes, as I said, had... Uh, have two uh, responsibilities. One is to know and the other is uh, to do, okay? Um, uh, classes that people, uh, you know, kind of think up and create, uh, custom uh, classes, they tend to follow uh, kind of patterns, okay? So this one is like a data holder pattern. Okay, for the most part, what this class does is it just holds instances of uh, some kind of piece of, of uh, uh, data, instances about a state. It has a little bit of extra behavior for our convenience. We've used tools in our class. Uh, oh, um, like the string uh, class, we've used that a lot. And it has all kinds of cool methods that are a part of it, like uh, oh, oh, like the format, like the find, like the replace. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, of, uh, of methods that are uh, part of that. That's a pretty well balanced uh, class in terms of uh, uh, to know and to do. What does it? No, well, it knows the data is in our string. What can it do? Well, all the methods that you can call on it. And, and then we have some uh, classes, and I can't think of an example right now, but there are classes that are pretty much all behavior. They're tools, okay? The kind of classes that we're going to create and use in, in our course uh, are primarily these uh, data holder kinds of classes. And these are very important to uh, doing real information processing, okay? So they're going to have, have uh, primarily data that they hold. They're going to have some data that they calculate for us. So it's a, a technically behavior, but it's, a, it's very data-oriented uh, behavior, okay? So that's that stuff. So we're, we're going to close uh, Frankie. Now I'm going to bring over a copy of an already baked solution 
for the tutorial example that I want to use for uh, ex uh, exercise uh, one. Okay, so now we're really seeing the code itself. And I'm going to close this code here so we can see all the code. So um, let's make the type a little bigger. It's called create state area reports uh, .py. It's a program to print a report of state area records from a, a file in two different orders. Okay. And let's see what I've got. I've got a I've got a um I've got a program here that I think is pretty well factored out which is to say I haven't crammed all the logic into the main. Um, typically, if you can get, uh, if you want to put all your code into the main and it's a half a page long or a page long when you look at it in your editor, well, that's probably okay. You can probably get your head around that. But once you get a little bit more work, you want to start to factor out the parts of the code and put them into their own functions. So uh, here's what I've got. I've got a main, okay, that uh, really lives up to the name main because it is, uh, it is a summary of the action that goes on in the program and it coordinates and orchestrates the action. So what does it do? Well, it gets a list called states, okay, that we build out of an input file in a method called getStates. Uh, then it sorts that list by state name, and it calls a method that just prints a report, okay? Um, and it says uh, the title of the report is by state name. So we're going to look at uh, that one too. That's this one right here. So that's pretty well factored because it's one function that can print more than one report uh, depending upon how uh, we have sorted the list we're going to give it the appropriate uh, title. And yet, uh, 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 the column headings and the data that's in the columns are, are really done the same way uh, for both uh, versions of the report. OK. And then it turns out that when we do sorting, you'll see here, we have this uh, list of state instances called states. And lists have a method called sort. Okay. And um, if you just say you want to sort a list of a particular uh, class, if it's a very fancy class that knows its natural order, um, then it will sort without us having to pass it the name of a function to determine the order. Okay, our classes that we're going to be creating in in our course are not that fancy. Okay, um, one when you think of it, okay, a particular uh, class could only have one natural order. Okay, and if we want to sort things various ways, okay, uh, we could only use the natural order for one of our sorts. So instead of putting all the time into learning how to give, give a list of classes a natural order, which is a sort of an intermediate uh, s skill, we're just going to always uh, pass the name of the method that the sort is going to call in order to figure out what the order is that we want. So we've got one called by state name which has a method right here. 
and then we've got one called by total area okay uh, and we'll talk about those so um do I have pseudocode here no I haven't showed you pseudocode here but you know what's interesting is if you read the main in a well-factored out kind of program it reads like a uh, pseudocode uh, first we to get a list of of the states then we sort them then we run a report in that order then we sort them then we run a report in that order then we're done okay so what's kind of interesting about uh, well-factored longer programs is is it uh, is it the main uh, kind of gives us a high level pseudocode um, for the rest of the program okay so let's look at what happens in get states okay uh, well first of all we have to open the file so what does the data look like I usually give you two uh, copies um, of the file I usually give you an empty one why is that? Well, it's always been important to me as a professional programmer that if you get no data, that you do no harm, that you end kind of gracefully. Okay. Um, the other thing that I have is the real data. In this case, it's called, uh, I don't have it over here yet. So let me get it over here. It is called uh, one moment. <laughs> it's here. I just can't find it. I'm back. It is called state area data dot text. So I'm copying it on my pre baked version. I'm pasting it in here. Um, Okay, state area data dot uh, text. Okay, now this looks a little crowded. Okay, I tell you what I did. I, I did a trick. I copied these values off of a Wikipedia list, and the numbers had commas in them. Okay, they were already formatted. Okay. Uh, Python really doesn't like to read a number value in that's got commas in it. That's, that's for display on the output side using uh, the format uh, method of the string uh, command or one of the other ways we can format uh, numbers. Okay. So what I did is I wrote, I copied them over into here, uh, commas and all. And I ran a little program that just got rid of the commas. So that given that I had to look for commas and take them out, I couldn't use um, uh, commas to separate the data. I also couldn't use just the space to separate the data because I, I've got uh, values like New Mexico that are two words. So I don't want it to think I have a state called new right or in South Dakota a state called South so I do use some kind of a separator that wasn't a space and wasn't a comma and a common the thing that people do for that is that they use a semicolon so that's what we're going to split the data on so we have the name of the state we have the land area and then we have the water area okay so we're going to read these one at a time. We're going to create an instance of the state uh, class to hold them. Uh, and we're going to put that into the list uh, that we're going to use for uh, sorting and then iterating over to create our report. Okay, so let's go back to create state area reports and let's look at the get states a little bit uh, better okay um so we prompt uh please enter the file name 
So you're going to have to type in uh, state area data dot text. OK, and then we open it for reading. Something that we have uh, begun to do is we're adding this encoding equals UTF-8. I don't think that's in our textbook, but it, it turns out that um, our text editor is uh, using a UTF-8 encoding. And some of the documents that we read during the course um, will... Uh, will lead to our programs uh, blowing up if we don't add this encoding equal UTF-8. So we're always going to always going to add this when we open one of our text files for reading in our course. It's a pretty good habit. This is the common encoding for text in the United States. All right. Then we create an empty list called my states. Why is it called my states? Okay. Well, I don't want anybody to confuse it with uh, the list that we have up here in the main. This is called states. So this is a trick that I use. I usually add some extra word in front of it. My states, the states these states, something like that, to make it clear to the reader that um, it's not the same list that we have up uh, in the main. Okay? Now, actually, the Python architecture uh, would it, it keep them from being the same physical list, even if we use the same name, but I don't want to confuse the reader. And then we're going to iterate over the file for line and in file. OK, and then we have to split the line. OK, so we're splitting on the semicolon. This is probably the first time we've done that in this course. OK, and then we're using um, we're using a multiple assignment. OK, so we're getting out of it state name, land area as a string, water area as a string. OK. We always have to uh, differentiate between the string representation, which we typically read off of input, and then the binary implementation that uh, we're going to uh, store in our class. OK? And then uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to append an instance of the state uh, class, and of course, we construct it by calling the constructor. OK, and what do we pass? The state name, that's already a string. We pass it a float of the land area as string and a float of the water area as string. And after we have iterated over all those in the for loop, we close the input file and we return my states. That gets assigned to states. Now we have a list of states that we can sort and we can print. So let's look at the sorting first. That's the easiest part. Okay. So the sorting is easy because, um, again, if you have, if you tell, um, if you tell a list object you want it to sort itself, okay, if um, if the objects in it have a natural order that you can do, that essentially does by asking the order, what's uh, greater than what, what's less than what, well, it can sort it into that natural order, okay? We haven't implemented that in our class. So we're going to have to say key equals and then the name of the method. Now something that goes wrong here sometimes if you use auto completion. Let me show you what goes wrong. I'm going to say I'm going to want to say by state name. So I say by and it goes oh the first one is by state name. Let's give it a double click. You see these parens that you automatically get? These cause a bug because we're not calling that method. We're passing a reference to the method. 
Uh, the editor gets uh, tricked into making it look like a call. So it's just the name of the method. It doesn't have the parens on the end. We're not calling it. We're not invoking it. We're giving it to sort, and sort's going to invoke it. It's going to use parens. Okay? So we've got two. We've got one called by state name. Let's look at that one first. Um, all we have to do is we just have to, we have to tell uh, sort how to get the name out of the instance. Well, we just take the instance which is being uh, uh, passed to us by sort and something you have to know okay so sort's going to pass you an instance of a, of the state a class and then you're going to just return the value of state name and it's going to compare them okay it's going to do the comparison all right so that's going to work uh for the by name order, okay. So we're going to uh, in a minute we'll look at the print report by state name. Let's look at the second sort, okay. So we say we want to sort by total. The key is going to be by total area, okay. We're at, uh, we're going to expect to find a method by that name. But what's this reverse equal true? Well, it's going to put it in the reverse order. It's going to be in descending sequence. There are times when we want the biggest things first. Okay? Uh, in fact, in this case, because the title of the report is going to be by descending total area in square miles, well, that makes sense. Okay, so this is how we tell it to go into descending order, reverse equal true. And we say by uh, the title is uh, by descending order, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now how are we going to get this value? Well, it's a little different, okay? Uh, by total area is fine. We're getting past a state instance. But you have, to, you have to remember that in this class, the total area is not kept as one of the instance variables. And this is because of a really important, um, a re really important uh, principle of data management that essentially we don't keep redundant information. Okay, so if you can calculate the uh, the total area from the data that you actually have, you don't store it. Okay, uh, why don't you do that? One, you save space. Two, um, you know that they can never get into a contradictory state. If you actually store three values and the total is not the sum of the two parts, well, then you're in big trouble. Okay, so there's uh, two reasons why we don't store data that we're able to calculate. So what we typically do is we typically create a method that does the calculation for us. Um, the good thing about this is it does it in a standard way, okay? If you look at the details of my method, uh, I think I've got rounding in there to make sure we only have two decimal places. I've got all kinds of interesting things in there uh, that we'll look at at a later time, okay? So um, uh, we're going to return, but... In, in this case, it's state instance dot method call. Okay, how do we know it's a method call? One, it has a verb phrase kind of name, calculate total area. And two, it's got the parens at the end. Okay, so these are kind of tricky. These, uh, these, uh, these uh, calculate, uh, methods because their behavior, they're clearly behavior, but they are returning a value. So it's easy to get, it's easy to get confused and, and think, oh, well, this is going to be just like the other instance uh, variables. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, for instance, I'm going to say state instance uh, dot 
total area in square miles, no parens. Well, we don't have an instance variable with that name. That's going to get you an error, okay? But we do have a method with this uh, name, and this code is not going to get you an error, and it's going to get you the data that you want. Okay. So let's go see these things work, okay? What do we do? Well, we're going to print out our reports. And what I'm going to do is, before I show you the fancy titles, printing, and column headings, printing, I'm just going to take that code and uh, comment it out. And I, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to print uh, the by state name and the by descending area in square miles. So let's give this a run. So we're going to run it. Remember, we have to give it the name of the file. State. Oh, first of all, let's test if we give it the empty file. Empty file. Dot text. Okay, well, we got a graceful ending. That's all I want. I don't want things blowing up. Okay, later on when we print the titles, when we give it the empty file, uh, it's going to uh, show us the titles but no data under them. Is that pretty? Mm, not super pretty, but it's graceful. It's not blowing up on us. We never want to blow up because we have an empty input file. Because as soon as you you start ignoring those kinds of things, you'll get an empty input file. Okay, so let's give it the real input file. This one is called um, state area data dot text. So state area data dot text. I did something wrong. I'm going to pause and find the error. Found it. It was supposed to be dot text, not underscore text. All right. Make it a little bigger again. Maybe I can type right this time. State area data dot txt. And here we go. So let's... Uh, Make this bigger. Here are two reports, okay? And let's see. The first one's supposed to be in order of state name, okay? Let's see. The first thing that we're printing is the state name. So A, A, C, C, M, N, O, S, T, U, W. Yeah, it looks like that sort's working just fine, okay? Um, uh, we probably ought, ought to want to... Uh, if we were uh, if we were testing this for the first time, we might want to look at the uh, the math. So this is the land area, this is the water area, and this is the total area. We might want to check a couple with a calculator and see that they add up. Actually, we've already tested that when we did the unit test for the state uh, class. I don't think I showed you uh, how to run those. Uh, did I? Let's find my states. Uh, I've got this all messed up. Here's my states. Let's say we want to run my states. And uh, here are all the test cases and they pass. So that's uh, we know that that uh, we know that that works. Okay, let's go back and run uh, create state area reports again uh, because I uh, overwrote the output. We only looked at half of it. So state area data dot text. Let's look at this. Okay, 
here it is looking pretty good okay and and the second one is supposed to be in descending order of total area so total area is the third column and let's say 665 268 this looks like it's in the right order so the sorting looks good okay how do we get this formatting okay how do we get the data well um that's not the, all, all that hard to know uh the name is one of the instance uh, variables we just have to retrieve the value so is the land area so is the water area and to get the total area we just have to call the calculate total area method so how we got the data that goes online is not hard but what formatting strings do we have to use to get this kind of layout let's go look okay so what do the formatting strings look like well you'll remember when we're going to print using the formatting string the uh the string is actually the formatting instructions itself dot format and then inside the parens uh, are the list of variables that we want to format so the variables are state name land area in square miles water area in square miles and then a call to calculate total area in square miles so that's how we got the four data columns what do these say well this zero one two three these are the numbers of the variables where they're going to be placed so we start counting from zero zero one two three that's how we know the order uh, the lesson sign says we're going to left justify the greater than sign says we're going to right uh, justify um, the uh, 15 is the width it turns out that it's pretty handy for these uh, if you can make all the widths about the same okay at least when you begin okay so uh, we've got uh, four columns if we make them each 15 wide I think all the data is going to fit that means that the total uh, is going to be 60 characters wide so they all have a 15 in them although the right three have a greater than size that says they should be right uh, justified okay we don't have any further instructions in the format for the state name but in the three number columns we have a comma to say we want to separate the numbers to the left of the decimal point with uh, commas to show thousands we have a decimal point two uh, f that says we want to have a fixed point number with two digits that are in the uh, the uh, decimal point so this says this is going to be 15 characters wide altogether okay uh, the right three characters are going to be a decimal point in two digits and everything to the left of there is either going to be a um, a digit a comma or a space and if we look again down here that's that's how they turned out you can see how they're kind of equal they're all 15 wide all right that's how we got that done now how did I find out how, how to do these things I essentially looked up the instructions on formatting strings in Python 3 in the Python 3 uh, documentation and looked at the examples and experimented okay and that's essentially how you're going to do it all right now what about the rest of this formatting let's look at the report title let's take this and uncomment it okay so let's print the report uh, titles all right let's give this a run now we're just going to say we're going to run down here give it a run 
we're going to call it a state uh, area data dot text and let's see it came out and it came out with our titles okay by state name by descending total area in square miles but see how nicely centered these are okay how do you center them well first you figure out how wide your whole report is well remember each of these are 15 so it's 60 wide so in our formatting statement we're going to say uh here's a title that we want to center in 60 characters let's see what that looks like well it looks like this uh, zero is the first uh, uh field that's report uh, title uh we have a colon and then we want to center it that's a circumflex in 60 characters that's a six zero so that's how we came up with a rule that centered that okay how are we going to do these column titles well let's uncomment them and run them okay we've got three print statements there we're going to uncomment and we're going to run them okay and then let's us uh give it a run so we're going to run it and we're going to say state area data dot text and that's going to run and look at these pretty column headings okay well how did we know uh how do we get this to look so pretty well, we knew that we wanted to skip two lines before we uh, printed out the report heading. So we skipped uh, two lines on the first one and two lines on the second one. We knew we wanted to skip one line between the heading and the column, the report heading and the column heading. So we've got just a plain uh, print, uh, print, print to get that. And we know there are two lines of column headings here. Um, uh, so we know there are two prints. And then how do we get them in, in the right uh, columns? Well, they're all 15 columns wide. And the first one is uh, justified to the left. And the next ones are justified to the right. So if we go back and we look at the code, uh, there's there's a lot of rules here again there are four uh, rules numbered zero one two three okay they're all 15 column uh 15 uh, characters wide the first one is uh, justified to the left and the others are justified to the right so i wouldn't say this is hard it's tedious okay but when you're done you've got some pretty reports okay so um let's just look at the code one more time all right okay uh your assignment is going to be uh very similar to this so you're going to get a uh, file with records in it um that you're going to put into instances of a class uh, i'm going to give you the class code just like we were given the class code here we're going to put that into a list we're going to sort the list uh two different ways okay uh and in fact uh you're going to be able to uh to set up your program in a similar way okay your main is kind of kind of going to be the top level pseudocode okay uh you're going to have a get uh whatever that is going to uh read the data out of the file along my line and construct the instances that go into the list okay then you're going to sort the list and call the print report 
the print report is going to be uh, uh, pretty similar here. It's going to include both uh, instance variables and a method call. Okay? Because we have to get used to that. Sometimes we're going to have to call a, call a, uh, a, a, a method to, uh, to get a piece of uh, data. It does seem odd that, that it's uh, our final intention is to get data and that we're going to do that by calling behavior, but that's just the nature of the beast. And you're going to have to do all this kind of formatting. And you're going to have to have two different um, methods that express how to do the sort. Okay, so um, uh, good luck with that. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.